What's up guys? Welcome to another video. So today we are going to be going over God Wars 2. God Wars 2 has been out for quite a while, but I never actually made a guide on it. I never really made um, a video kind of showing you what to do or how to do it. So that's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to show you all four of the bosses. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you some mechanics. Uh, so let's start off with how do you get there? Uh, so as a normal player with like without Max Cape, you're going to have to walk there their first time. So make your way to Varrock and head east towards Soulsbane uh, area. So basically start here, run all the way east, this is where you want to be. And then from here, run around north, you'll see some random NPCs, those are the adventurers. And uh, you'll have this big rift, which is where everything's set up. You have some banks, um, if you will, and then we'll make our way down. Whenever Rosalo is in game, he sells war camp teleports, and the war camp teleports will teleport you to that location we just were. So that's the best way to get there um, whenever he's in game, and if you're not a max. So if you are a max, you can just teleport to the max guild, and then go south to the God Wars portal and click the um, the war camp teleport. Right, right here. God, or God War Two portal room. So once you're at the portal room, there are a few things you can do. You can click the portal, and it has options to go to each camp. From each camp, you'll have monsters you can kill for that respective signet. So for example, let's go to the Sliske camp. You'll have a good chunk of monsters. You can kill shadow demons, white, uh, Greg. <laughs> no, I believe Greg is there just to uh, give you information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, just to say, kill them for some stuff. Uh, so I'll show you kind of what their drops are. Let's go to white. Um, very basic stuff. The only thing you're really going for is the Sliske and Signets. If you're not interested in farming these, and, and to be completely honest with you, they could they could definitely be buffed. Um, they, they should be buffed. Um, you can go back to the portal room, and you can gamble blood. Not necessarily gamble blood runes, but gamble blood runes for Signets. I'll show you how that works. So you can also use death runes, but blood runes are actually cheaper, so you will use them on the Dark Mage, and you get a random chunk of signets. The downside is you can't control which signets, and you could end up not getting any of the sustained signets that you freaking want. There we go, there we go. <laughs> That's the one I actually need. Um, so yeah, and uh, this is this is, uh, this is is definitely the best option to go rather than killing them. The, killing them definitely needs to be improved. Um, there is also a, another thing. If you have all of the achievements done, every single achievement done, you can access the achievement cape shop, and the uh, achievement cape will teleport you to the camps. So if you have all the achievements done, you don't even need signets anymore. So that's how the bosses do. None of the rest of these NPCs matter too much. They're mostly just for lore and storyline behind God Wars 2. Um, I mean, that's if, if you're into that kind of stuff, you can maybe talk to them, see what kind of options they have. But uh, let's get into the bosses. Alright, so the next boss we're going to be attacking is the Zerosian boss, uh, Akthanakos. So how he works is he has a lot of strong magic attacks, but the only real thing you have to focus on in terms of your gear is 50 prayer bonus. You have to have over 50 prayer points to um, to effectively damage him. So we, we can see right there we're good with that. He also has a special attack that um, can do a lot of damage if you don't have a halo, and I believe it's different depending on which halo you have. So if you have the, I gotta remember which ones are, I don't know which ones are which, but the Sarah one, um, it does anywhere from, I guess it doesn't do any damage, but it takes prayer points, it drains your prayer points um, anywhere from one to 10. Um, you have the uh, Zamora, I think it's the, the, whichever one is one ID higher. <laughs> They're not labeled, it's just the IDs. I believe it's the Zamrock one where it, it um, just damages you. It deals 10 damage, and then you have the Guthix one, which deals 5 damage, and then drains around 5 uh, points, so it's kind of like a halfway point. So you do want a Halo. The crown works and will protect you completely, so if you have a crown, rock that. You can use Twisted Bow, but I'm not sure if it's better or not. Um, to my knowledge, I believe just using over you know your strongest melee gear is the route to go. And again, if you're soloing, um, bring the Elijah, that's what I'm going to bring. There is someone here doing it, so I'll just sort of give you a look at how it works. Um, so, yeah, he just does this special attack where he, he does a good chunk of damage. He can melee you. Um, it's best to... Uh, you can see what his gear is. 
since he's soloing, I assume that's why he's got more... Well, actually, he doesn't have a shield, so that's probably why he's the third HP body. Um, the only other mechanic you have to worry about is when he gets to a certain amount of health, he will... Um, his head will... He'll, he'll basically die and be reborn as a, like a skull version of himself, and just has a little bit more health. So you kind of have a secondary death effect. Um, it is negatable if you actually manage to kill him the exact amount of hit points he had. So let's say he had 50 health and you hit a 50, you could negate that secondary effect. So... Um, if they're lower health, it could be best to, I don't know, spec or something, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, I'll show you that mechanic if he does manage to trigger it. Alright, he's getting it pretty low, assuming he doesn't manage to hit whatever his health is, he should trigger it. Any minute. Any minute. Any minute. Almost there. He might actually just kill it. What? I thought it was 50 health. Is it not 50 health? There, there, yeah, 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 yeah. But he did do it. You see it? See it just dies? Yeah, so you can negate the effect. It's always best to try to combo it out. That's probably something that's going to get fixed, but it is a current factor, so I will show you that now. Alrighty, so the last boss we have is the Serenic boss. Again, you want to use your best melee gear. You can range. Range is, um, it does, it is weak to it, but I feel like melee just beats it, assuming you have the best melee gear. If you don't have better melee gear than you do range, you could go the range route. Not T-Bow, though. Um, you'd want to use a Serenic Bow, uh, Blowpipe, or Redwood Shortbow, something along those lines. So, it is weak to slash, and you can see I'm kind of on stab. You're going to want to slash. You're going to want to slash. You see, you can see the immediate the differences. Um, so, it's unfortunate if you want to train like attack or something like that. Wouldn't recommend it for this boss. But it is very weak to slash. So make sure your style is always on slash. And if you weren't sure if that matters, it does. So always be on the preferred style for the boss. If you can, if you can, obviously. This is a slash weapon, so you'd want to be on slash anyways. Um, the boss is very simple. It does have a crystal rain mechanic, but it's kind of glitchy. Um, so it, you don't really have to worry about it too many times. I think it only works like the first time on startup. I don't know. It, I, I got to figure it out. But it shouldn't um, come into play. And if it does come into play, just um, I think it's based on a grid. So you'd want to like just if you're taking damage, you're on a bad spot. <laughs> if you move to a spot, and you're not taking damage. You're in a good spot. Um, so just go where the the rain cloud. They basically a bunch of rain clouds will spawn. It's the humidify animation. So um, just avoid those. Uh, she's a tank. She takes a lot of um, you know takes a lot to hit her, and she does have the most health of all of them. Um, but the strategy is very simple, and this is the most um, is the easiest. I was gonna say the most AFK, but I don't I don't like those. I don't like that word choice. It's the easiest for sure. Uh, so I have someone out here at Ixtheran. I don't want to crash him, but we'll sort of just monitor it. Um, so in, in terms of gear, this is kind of what you'd want. You want your max damage output. You want the best melee you have. You can see he's also using an Elijah. I brought an Elijah as well. I think if you're soloing it, it makes complete sense to just use an Elijah. Um, the damage reduction from, from I mean, the, the damage difference is just not going to be worth it compared to the 30% damage reduction of the Elijah. So definitely rock the Elijah. Um... Uh, how his mechanics work is basically he's like Darox, but he's using Blood Barrage. So the lower his health, the higher he's going to hit you. But the catch is he's healing himself at the same time. So that's why you want damage output. You want to try to kill him faster than he can, you know, than how can he can out heal you. Um, the jackals aren't too um, concerning. They will attack you, but it's not really worth it to focus on them. You just kind of absorb. I mean, they don't do a whole lot of damage. They're just kind of an annoyance. It's uh, it's a it's a jackal. That's what it does. Um, so yeah, the lower his health, the harder he's going to hit you. And the main strategy is to just sort of power it out. He does have the lowest health of all of them. Though. He does have a thousand health. And we saw Slisk had fifteen hundred. Another good strategy for Ixthrin is to gangbang it. Yes, uh, because of its mechanics. Uh, if you have multiple people, it makes it so much easier. You can see how this mini group of five um, just just shred it, shred it as if it was a cow. Or something else weak. Okay, so for Sliske, there are two gear setups you can do. And really, if you have different gear than what I have, or or different than Max gear, you can use whatever you you, you want. Um, but there is a dragon form that does have fire breath, so you need either an apex shield or an overload potion to avoid that. Um, you also need a slower weapon for the mind phase, um, which I am using Dragon Warhammer because it's a one-handed um, and it's, it, it works. So. And then you want your main weapon to kill the other two. So this is the mime phase. 
It can only be damaged by the solo weapons. And as you saw, he, he did change shapes. That's um, Sliske's whole thing. He's a shapeshifter. This is the dragon form. He's back to the mime fame. I think it's a 1 in 30 chance, and it's just completely random based on when you hit him. Um, so for the mime phase, you're going to want to use it. He has no defense. He's essentially a tank. Or not tank, a pure. <laughs> He's a pure. Um, he has no defensive stats. So there's really no point in using your spec for this. I don't. I just uh, just smack him and wait till he switches forms. This is the Nia form. All you really have to do is switch to melee prayers, and it's the same process. This form is the tankiest form, so this is probably where you want to unload your specs if that's uh, if that's your route. Um, any slow weapon would work, such as God Swords, Anchor works. I think the Granite Hammer works, um, and then Bryophytus Staff works, and that is the actual preferred method, which I'll show you in a second. Dragon form isn't too um, crazy. You, again, you just have to have your shield or, or an anti-dragon shield would work if you if you just have that. You don't have to have the apex. Overloads are, you can buy them, so there's no excuse to not have overloads. So this is the preferred strategy using the Bryophyta Staff. Um, it's a high tier weapon, so a lot of you might not have it. But if you do, it's your preferred weapon, um, because you can use it for all three styles, and uh, you can essentially just AFK, and you do a lot of damage to all of them anyways. Um, the only thing you have to remember is that the dragon will smack you pretty hard if you don't have an anti-fire. Um, overloads work, they do work as an anti-fire, I just don't want to waste one for the purposes of this video. Um, then I also have the MP part, so. It's very simple, it's a lot more AFK because you can just sit here, I mean the only, prayer, the only thing you'd actually have to do is switch your uh, melee prayers, which is why it's preferred. People often bring Void, um, so if you if you wanted to use Void you could, but I, you know, I, 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 it doesn't really make much of a difference, I prefer this gear myself. And then this is the phase where you'd really have to just kind of pay attention. And I just found a crown of the gods while I'm making this video. <laughs> Go fucking figure. <laughs> I'm cheating for this staff too. I only borrowed the staff just to show that it would be best in slot for this video. So I just totally got a complete cheated crown of the gods. That is hilarious. So the last thing we need to talk about is the rewards. So we have the crown of the gods, which is the rare, rare item that um, is not actually on the drop table. It is a 1 in 2500 chance. So the fact that we just got one is insanely rare. Uh, it's my second one, so I'm very stoked to have it. It's, it's one of the more valuable items in the entire game um, and is the best in slot hybrid helmet. Um, so for Sliske, you have two loots, the Demonic Tome, which boosts your melee stats infinitely, and then you have the Corruption. The Corruption can be used on normal Armadil to make it Corrupt Armadil, and then it has better stats. That's what these two are here. Zaros drops the Zarosian Scythe, and then the Robe Top of Darkness and the Robe Bottom of Darkness. Ikthyrlin drops a Masket's Plate Leg and Chest Plate, and then as well the Ikthyrlin Scepter. And then Illund drops the Elven Battle Axe and the Serenic Bow. But that's going to do it for the video. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys learned something. If you have any suggestions, any tips you think can make the video better, or you know just anything you think that people doing God Wars 2 should need to know, any, you know, any suggestions, any tips. Um, that'd be great. And if you liked the video, make sure to give it a like. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later.